In this video, we're going to have a look at the ikisolver vap example file. So let's dive in. We have two setups inside the example. We have one setup using uh, the traditional object nodes with bones and an IK solver done using a chop node. So if you look at the chop node node here, inverse skin, uh, it's set to inverse kinematics and you give it a root bone and bone uh, and, and the effector. So that's the target we need to match along with the twist effector. So we have those two controls driving two bones. Uh, or driving a chain of bone. In that case, I only have two bones. We have control for dampening and blending to uh, the F key solution. So that's the animation I, I have here. I'm just moving the target or the N effector. Uh, I'm driving the translate from a point position. So if I click here, you see that it's fetching the point parameter, the P, the P attribute uh, from a geometry inside my geo one okay so let's dive in so it's fetching it from from this line preview here uh, which is an object merge to my uh, geo one uh, sub network so let's hide all the object nodes and have a look at the other nodes here uh, so i'm gonna hide geo one so geo one is just uh, a line geometry or, or the points that we where we are uh, animating uh, with KinFX uh, rigging or with SUP rigging. Here I have two other object nodes. So display links is a bone link uh, that is uh, so a bone link geometry that is copied onto each of the points uh, from the animated skeleton. So okay. So if you want to do that, so just keep in mind that you need to delete the last joint uh, because the tip here does not map to a bone object. But in KinFX, you always need to have a tip if you want the solver to uh, properly work. Uh, so the tube is similar to what we had in the other example file. So just fetching the rig controls from my Geo1 rest marker, NM marker, and skin marker. And we're going to have a look at, at the geometry uh, G1 now. Okay, so we dive in. Uh, I have a capture network down there. So the only thing that it does, it's adding a bone capture attribute to the tube uh, using the rest skeleton marker here. Okay, so this rest skeleton marker is those lines. So let's put the rig pose a rig pose node to be able to visualize the points. It's the links. Okay, so you see that's the the rest transform or the rest skeleton that I'm capturing to. We can put it there. And from there we have a set of controls. And those are animated controls. So I can take this, move it there if I want to visualize. Visualize the controls. There we go. And that's the animation that I have. So if I mouse over, so the tip is being translated. The other the other joints are not moving. Uh, then I have a curve. So that's that's just a curve for display purposes. And I can dive in uh, the solver key to, to see what's happening there. So leftover solve curve node there, but we have the solve IK solver. Uh, so it's similar to what we had with the solve curve solver. Give a list of target points. So tar target points can be given as uh, point IDs or as transforms. And you need to, to give it a, a list of, tar uh, of control points. So here I'm selecting the control points from the second input. I'm looking for root a tip and middle controls. Okay. Let's right click in the viewport to disable uh, the inputs so we see only the solution. So that's the solution that's given there. Uh, so I can tweak the axis, the axis everywhere. Uh, 
there's a twist offset I can go. Uh, da, da, da. And this is working fine. I can also go and increase the number of points. So now the, now the IK solution is different. So let's have a look at the, the actual deformation that's happening with this. So I'm getting a deformation like that. So here at the root, I think I can change uh, the way this behaves. So the root can be locked to its original orientation using this control. I also have control over stretching and squatch. So let's make that stretch. this is stretching properly. Uh, so the orientation is not uh, interpolated along the solution. So that's something you'll need to do using a blend transform. So uh, if you I rotate the marker, it's not affecting that. So it's really positioning all the joints on on the plane there of the of the twist uh, effector. So get point transform. So with the get point transform, I can use the multiple signatures. So the signature I have for uh, the targets. So odd file from the first input and the targets. I can do it like this. Uh, it's giving me the same solution. Or I can unconnect that and plug the targets there. So I have the same problem I had before. I need to go and plug the points, uh, the target, like this. Okay, so when you do that, so the, the first thing actually that it used uh, was one with the twist IDs. So I need to, I can go and like rename that and make that like this. So this is a way to fix that. So for, for the root, I could also use the twist IDs uh, array. So that's the other signature. Uh, so that's all you use the targets. I can do the same for the controls. So from the second input, Here, so I can switch that to twist IDs array. Plug that here, plug that there. I get the same result. Or if I go and plug a transform here, I get that with uh, transforms as well. So that's another way to. to uh, to interface with the solve IK node. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the solve IK node. Uh, you can play with the parameters there, so it's almost the same parameters we have on the on the chop IK solver. Uh, there is a simple solver for two or three joints. Uh, this does not expose all the parameters we have. Uh, so you can try that out as well.